Racism is taught. Passive racism is one of the biggest killers and we have a lot of that around these parts. They swore at us and insulted us. <laughs> that was the first time I was ever called a nigger. <laughs> A lot of people try to paint the racism in the UK as subtle, concealed. It is more usually the case that it isn't in your life and therefore you presume it of others. The last protest made it onto the front page of the local paper. I'm happy with that. The language people were comfortable using, the term half caste, to describe me. It's going to be interesting to see what the turnout is this week. In our local area, to be able to change minds, we're going to have to be able to educate ourselves. So the two that I made last week were these two. Right. There's been a fair number of issues like through the past where I've you know, been galvanised to want to say join a protest but haven't been able to go up to London or go up to Bristol to join in where people are taking action and felt you know, in the Oval if I tried to organise anything there'd be maybe three of us or something and it could potentially look just a bit silly instead. But just made a Facebook event saying I would be standing, uh, messaged a few friends who I knew would be sympathetic and it snowballed. My name is Flora and I moved from South London to a small village just outside Yeovil when I was 10 years old. This is me and my dad. When I moved here, it was the first time I became incredibly aware of the fact that I was mixed race because I was no longer surrounded by people who looked like me. That's no one's fault, that's just a fact of living in a largely white um, town or kind of on the outskirts. Have you ever regretted moving us? Well, I remember one of, one of my work experiences where I said to the client, you know, very good, very excellent, and all done by hand. And he said, yes, they work like niggers, they did. These are the things sometimes you just have to, not, not ignore, but you just have to let, let, let go. Otherwise, oh, it'll see, just that's where crazy. we disagree. I am actually really excited about tomorrow. I really am. And it's my dad's birthday. Shout out to my dad. And I'm like, we're going to the protest. <laughs> but he wants to come with me, which is good. And he is white. And I, when I mean white, he is white. Dad, what's it been like to be a white dad and be raising mixed race children? In this area, and if it, more ignorance that people don't know how to relate to people of colour. They don't know what kind of questions that they're allowed to ask or or maybe a little bit uncomfortable how to relate to, to people of colour. We are on our way to the protest today um, and one stereotype that this family definitely subverts is Afro-Caribbean timing. I was ready. I was the one that kept them waiting. Sorry. But we're all very excited. Hello, Annabelle again. Uh, we're just on our way to the protest. Got my massive sign. A bit nervous. I saw the far right protesters on the news fighting the police for what seemed to be no logical reason. <laughs> so, waiting for Hannah, Flora, and Annabelle, who I managed to get in contact with after last week. We've not actually met in person. Hello, Flora. Hello. <laughs> it's going to be so awesome, honestly. It's going to be great. I hope like people actually take something away from this, not just come and think that they've done their part by showing up. And yeah, I think we've seen the power of like us collectively. How our voice is so powerful. You know, yeah, I think. 100%, yeah. If we keep it up, something can change. Growing up mixed race in Somerset, it wasn't always easy. Being followed around shops, asked for drugs constantly, or being called a nigger by an adult whilst I was still in primary school. I'm telling you all this just to highlight that although it may not make the news as it does in America or the bigger cities in the UK, racism in Somerset is very much prevalent. I have experienced racism here. I've experienced racism up north where I used to live. I've learned over these past couple of weeks that our minds have to be taken apart and put back together again to truly recognise where we are lacking in regard to the topic of racism. I'm 23 and Hannah's 17 and I feel like if I'd had a place to come with other mixed race people, people of colour when I'd been 17, I think I would have got to where I am now mentally and being able to talk about issues of race and stuff way quicker than I have. The conversation has been silent for so long and it's sort of been 
It's been so such an absent discourse. This is the change that we're making. This generation has more, I think, more accountability for social justice and social issues, and I think we're more willing to come out and stand and fight if we have to. My black dad is gentle and kind. He enjoys bird watching and ironing to unwind. He has experienced racism that I cannot even fathom. I want you to try and dissect some of the anger black people are feeling today, how they feel after being stopped and searched again. Taking into account the hurdles they have faced, I'm not condoning violence, I can't, it's not in my DNA, but what I'm trying to say is think about why black British communities may feel a certain way. Be mindful, be kind. You don't know the history that lies behind the eyes of my black dad.